Hello and welcome to Health and Beauty Hacks. I'm Mia Sines, your host. I'm really excited in this episode that I get to share one of my favorite sound therapy healing people, David Kennett. And before I bring you on, I mean, yes, thank you. I just want to share, I've known this man for years. I've interviewed him before. I think he's fabulous. I've had a couple of um, meditation albums and David's beautiful, beautiful clarity. Um, one of his pieces is actually in my contentment um, meditation on the um, on the inner child, the foundations of the inner child album. So I love this guy. He's great. And he's going to bring us magic today. David, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome. And look at that amazing office you have and that shot behind you. It's fabulous. I'm very, very blessed. Thank you, Mia. Thank you for having me on your show. I feel very honored to be here. Thank you. Would you like to share with us? I know that your parents were a bit of celebrities in their own right. Would you like to share with us a little bit about your journey? I'm sure that you got a little bit of influence with your daddy there. For sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, I don't know if we could categorize him as a celebrity, but he was certainly um, uh, very talented and gifted and, and uh, well known among, among many. The, uh, the late uh, Michael Small was my dad. Um, I did change my, lane, my name later. You might wonder why it's a David Kennett, um, but uh, that's a whole nother story. Um, uh, but my dad, my dad was um, a film composer, did music for movies. He was best known for his, particularly for his movies that he made music for in the 1970s era of that decade. Um, and he got into this niche of paranoid conspiracy films like Parallax View, um, Marathon Man, which is quite uh, well known with Dustin Hoffman, Laurence Olivier, uh, and uh, very early on the movie called Clute. Yeah. Uh, with Jane Fonda and yes. Donald Sutherland. So he, he was in this niche of like dark noir 70s films, even though my dad was a, a very um, funny man. He had a great sense of humor, um, really inspired, of course, me to um, explore my musical talents, but also more importantly for me and beyond music was his ability to inspire wonder within me. We would as a child he would take me on a piggyback ride into the forest and we'd come upon obviously some trees and and we would actually characterize the trees and give them names like this is henry this is charlie and we'd actually talk to them as if they were people uh, but it really opened my imagination as a child and um, i remember also he had this like persian carpet uh, rug in his uh, his recording small home studio and he'd have these uh, kind of eclectic instruments from different cultures um, kind of strewn on the on the rug and he would invite me to sit on this rug and we would start to compose extemporaneously extemporaneously songs um, and as we were singing and making up these songs we'd imagine this was a magic carpet that would levitate above the earth and as we were floating above planet earth across the different continents we'd come up with different songs depending on where we were like which continent like we were africa or you know china we'd come over up with these these songs so he really uh, again way awakened a lot of wonder within me real a sense of being in touch with my inner child uh, which today I, I do feel a very strong connection with and so i think when we access that place we can um the amount that we can create is un unlimited it really taps you into a creative part of yourself if not more joy hopefully um and so to that i owe him a lot and my mom mama my mother is also artistic she's a, a painter a sculptor uh, my dad my brother plays um a little bit of piano bass uh loves to dj uh, he's also a, now he's like a writer but he does so uh, there's yeah there's just a, a lot of artistic uh, energy in my family and i'm um, very grateful for that I love it. It's so important. Music and sound is so vital. And I want the audience to understand that as women, men, we can use this ability to not only to heal our body, since we are, have so much water in our body, more than like 87%. Um, so it vibrates through our whole system. 
we can feel it, we change. And if you ever think about how modern music or blues affects you, right? Your mood, your sensualism, whatever, that is what on Overdrive we're gonna to get to experience here with David because it's really important. I know that I use music for exercise because I love to walk and I love to have visuals, but I can't do it without my music. And believe me, I keep to the beat, right? So it's literally, it, it helps us in so many ways. So I'm really grateful that you're here and you do things with, um, with therapy to optimize people's health. And that is on many levels. So it can be about breaking things down in the body vibrationally. It's you also work with people with asthma and breathing disorders. Would you like to talk a little bit about that before we let you loose on the music with us? Sure. So, um, I mean, I owe a lot to my dad and I have, I've had a few outstanding mentors uh, on the way. Um, also is Jonathan Goldman, who's a pioneer in sound healing, sound therapy. He's all about intention. You mentioned about how our body is, uh, you know, a large percentage and mostly water. Um, you know, there's been all those experiments uh, with Dr. Emoto and how to, you know, how your intention, if you even write a prayer on a piece of paper, it actually literally will change the structure of the water. Well, given that model, you can also take that to apply to um, music and sound. And, and how that works is that I use intention with sound, that intention actually will amplify sound. So that's really the basis a lot of my work, which I really um, learned a lot from Jonathan Goldman. Uh, so having an intention, you can, you can write down a word, something like optimal health, right, on a piece of paper. Um, optimal pH balance, very important. Um, optimal digestion, whatever your goal might be, but to have an intention, right? So music on its own, can be very beneficial, can change our mood, we can feel happy, sad, depending on the, the, the composer's intent or maybe just our response to it. And even more significantly, if we have a specific intention with sound, it will have great, um, great effects on our body, lasting effects even. So I have, I encourage um, people to uh, write down an intention on a piece of paper and actually place it on their body um, and as I'm singing, as I'm playing different musical instruments, the, the waves of sound. So this is not just a spiritual um, uh, reality. It is a physical reality. Sound is actually pressurized waves of energy, waves of energy. So as I sing, as I play a drum on someone's body, there are literally pressurized waves of energy that we call sound being directed to at the body. Now, what's really cool is that most of us have experienced, you know, in a, either a party or a music co concert, like a live concert, they're playing the volume so loud usually that we're feeling the vibration on our body and to the extent that we might even feel like our bones vibrating, like the bass or the, the drum is so freaking loud. Well, that's, that's a physical reality. The, the pressurized waves are actually vibrating our cells. They're moving our bones. And where this becomes very significant and exciting is that if you combine that with intention, your intention is going to be carried on that wave, somewhat like a surfer who can ride a wave. Instead of the surfer riding the wave, your intention is riding the wave, and it easily penetrates our skin, as we know when we hear music. It's you know, and it, it's not always volume. It's and sometimes it's just just being in the presence of of an intentional sound. That sound is going to penetrate your skin. It's going to be going into the tissues, glands, and cells of your body. So that's really the model, um, that fact that intention plus in sound equals healing is really uh, the model of my work. Also, Tom Kenyon has done great research on how just a singing bowl can change the brain waves. It can put you into an alpha theta, which is where we go when we go into deep meditation. So there's so many benefits. So yeah, I work with allergies because we can, we can introduce an allergen 
um, either the physical allergen we can put, like let's say somebody is allergic to dust or grass or um, cat hair, and we can put it in a bag or, or um, have it safely concealed from somebody who's definitely allergic to this substance and have it safely placed on their body as I'm singing or playing a drum. And we're going to be sending that information into the cells of the body, re-educating the immune system to understand that a healthy immune system can handle dust, it can handle um, cat hair or grass, what, what have you. Um, when we have an allergic reaction, it's when our immune system is feeling threatened. In other words, there's a perceived threat, but it's only based on perception. So what needs to happen is that is the, the perception perception needs to change and that can happen through this method that I'm just superficially talking about here. But this is how I can work with allergies with great success. I've had I have like something like 90% success rate. Um, I have like a hundred percent success rate with cat allergies, um, mm -hmm. dog allergies where it becomes difficult. Allergies are very complex and things like eczema um, are not necessarily an allergy. Um, so those things can be very difficult to clear. But if someone says, okay, David, I know I'm allergic to this specific substance because every time I eat it or every time I'm around this, I have a reaction. Um, it's, it's much easier to really help that individual because we can get, as I say, get a sample of that substance and re-educate the immune system. Now, again, I'm, I'm kind of giving a kind of a cursory, superficial uh, explanation of this. Obviously, if someone's reacting to something, sometimes it's because also the body is toxic, right? So there needs to be a cleanse. Um, sometimes the body is saying, you know what, uh, you know, David, sugar is actually bad for you and you shouldn't be eating too much sugar and I'm going to give you a rash. Like the body's trying to say, I don't want this, right? And so now it's not always about overriding or fooling the body. We need to listen to what the body's trying to say. But sometimes it, it's just plain confusion and it gets very deep in terms of what caused that confusion. That's a million dollar question. No doctor can tell you what causes an allergy. It's a big mystery. No one really knows. Um, but uh, my suspicion, among other suspicions, is, is emotional trauma. Often when people have trauma, and honestly, the trauma can be the slightest little thing. You could be eating an avocado and, and you, you just you happen to have Facebook open or you know, you're watching TV and something really horrific happens that's a slight trauma that can be confused with the food. So you're, suddenly your body is not feeling safe and then it's like, oh, avocado equals death. <laughs> you know? right. Or allergic reaction. Right. So it's very complex what cause, uh, causes a reaction. That's one suspicion I have. But of course, there are so many other factors. But the good news is that we can use sound therapy um, to uh, as one method to help re-educate the immune system to feel safe and to know um, to be clear again it's not about confusing it's not about sorry it's not about fooling the immune system it's about educating the immune system it's about restoring clarity this is dust it's not a pathogen it's not a virus this is grass mm -hmm. this is green grass this is not something that's going that's not a pathogen or a virus so therefore once the immune system says, oh, that's grass, that's dust, that's an avocado, I'm okay. It's the misperception that causes the reaction. Awesome. Nice. I'm allergic to rosemary. Oh, really? I can help you. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely can help you. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, if you're anaphylactic, it's not, that's not something I, I like. I mean, I have worked with people who are anaphylactic. Anaphylactic means you have a, such a severe reaction yeah. that you can't breathe. And they have to have an epinephrine pen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. Yeah. It's not my favorite thing to work with. Obviously, I'm not. I'm not a medical doctor. I'm a holistic nutritionist yeah. and a holistic allergist. I did have. Uh, I did graduate from the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition, but I'm not a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, I'm, I'm careful, uh, you know, to, and even, even when I work, I have worked with anaphylactic, but I'm very careful to say, you know, go back to your doctor. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I actually have people wait um, at least nine months in the case of anaphylactic, if they're anaphylactic. You wait nine months. Why do you wait nine months to go back to your doctor to ask if you can eat this substance? You wait nine months because it takes that long for the blood to show that you, your body has actually changed. I'll give you an example. I worked with a woman who had um, a deathly allergy to fish and shellfish to the extent she would have an anaphylactic reaction. And interestingly enough, I happened to ask her, I said, "Did you have you ever had any, like, trauma around fish or shellfish she's like wow i've never had anybody ask me that but i just remembered that i remember watching my dad fish as a child and i was so horrified and freaked out with the sight of this fish you know uh struggling for its life on a hook and dying and yeah. and and so we worked a little bit with that um and helping her release fear and um, terror around that um, but we didn't just work with the emotions. I actually worked, as I said, with the substance. Um, I have homeopathic vials I will use in my allergy practice um, and placing that on her body while doing the sound therapy. And that guy gave her four sessions, four separate sessions over a course of, uh, I think, a month and a half. She goes back to her doctor in nine months, has her blood checked. He gives her the green light because her, her blood changed to show that she was no longer allergic to shellfish and, or fish. And um, she goes on social media posting, I'm finally able to eat <laughs> salmon and I'm, I'm having no reactions. She's been fine. And that was like mm, six years ago now. She's still good. So yeah, that's awesome. It's, it's yeah. pretty exciting. It is. Yeah. It's very exciting. Okay, you're going to give us a super duper big treat here. Are you ready? Shall I? I'm ready. Warm us I'm ready. Up? Okay, great. All right, everyone, just relax either in your chair or if you're laying down, feel the fabric underneath you and just melt into your bed or your chair. And as the sound comes, bring it into you, into your most inner deep space and just listen and have it heal your body. And thank you, David. Thank you. If you have headphones or earbuds close by too, I recommend that. It sounds a little better. So here we go. So having an intention, you might wish for optimal health, optimal immune function, any body system, gland or organ, maybe just focus on that part of the body and have this intention of balancing, optimizing um, for yourself and your well-being blessings.
Wow, <laughs> that was incredible. That was incredibly beautiful. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> All right, everyone, um, come Thank back you. slowly and into the room because that that took me very deep. I actually, I saw images that were incredibly healing for what I'm going through, and I hope you all could experience for yourself. Listen to this again. Um, because I didn't have headsets, I turned up my volume, so it was blasting. Remarkable, remarkable. I want to talk to you off air about it. Thank you. It's just incredibly beautiful. My pleasure, my honor. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just in in awe. So, David, tell us about um, where people can get your um, music from. It's on your website. I've sent uh, clients there. I'm going there myself after this. <laughs> Would you like to talk a little bit about that? You can find my music on iTunes. I recommend typing in David Jesse, my middle name. Uh, I was using my middle name a lot at one time. So sometimes my, my work doesn't come up unless you type in my middle name to David Jesse Kennett. Um, I do offer individual sessions over Zoom. Um, so they're very customized to your needs, your goals. Um, we, we talked a lot about allergies in this particular segment, but I actually work a lot with just emotions and people's goals and what they would need to let go of, let go of blockages that are stopping us from reaching the highest potential. And um, so I'm all about uh, up-leveling our frequency and also just helping us align uh, with the center of our being and our purpose. It's beautiful. And you have a free gift for people. Would you like yes, that? Uh, I'd be happy to offer. Uh, anybody can shout out to me, write me an email, um, a 15, 20 minute free consultation, uh, which will include like a mini sound uh, therapy journey. So beautiful. Um, yeah. Free and, for... we'll, and we have that for everybody in the in the daily email and the and on the site. It's going to be exciting. And this was really an incredible, lovely experience with um with David and the healing power of sound. Wow, I wanna ask you, David, which I normally ask my guests, um, and since uh, you're actually my first guest on the show, then um, it's gonna be new to this. Such what is on your heart and mind that you'd like to tell the world right now? At this particular time, I maybe, I think at all times, um, to really go in and, and kind of explore the inner landscape, what's happening within you, what, what emotional pain um, do you have, do you, wounds that you have, um, if you're not aware of them, I think we all have them, um, and to really explore that and to really and be courageous enough to be willing to heal those wounds. Because I feel what we're seeing collectively right now is the externalization of hurt, inner hurt, inner pain. And we're seeing it play out uh, with a lot of unrest and conflict in our own country, let alone the world. So if we don't heal 
ourselves we see collectively play out in a lot of violence and even dare i say as a pandemic i feel the universe is saying you know what you're not going to do your inner work then we'll we're going to create a crisis so you're going to have to um heal yourself Great. i think that's why we're here as humans mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to just become um greater in inside out and so but it starts from within yeah. it's a long answer <laughs> no it was beautiful because all of it was absolutely right on this is a time for pause to to look within and to and to grow and to heal and to love more yes that's so really beautiful i'm here so you. grateful that you are here on this show with us thank you so oh, much i'm so blessed and honored thank you mia for having thank me you. and thank you all for joining us and we'll see you in another episode of health and beauty hacks thank you <laughs>